You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Orange is the New Black After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Orange is the New Black After Show. Go ahead, Animal. 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 Okay, on that note. <laughs> good morning, good evening, good afternoon, After Buzzards, and welcome to Netflix original series Orange is the New Black here at After Buzz TV. I'm your host, Thaddeus Massey, and thank you for joining us for episode four Imaginary Enemies. And joining us today is. Hi guys, Emma K. <laughs> Hi Emma K. I'm Megan Thomas, also known as at Meg Scoop. Hi Meg Scoop. <laughs> I'm Scott Moore. It's good to be back. And joining us today is the incomparable. <laughs> you hear that chuckle in the background? Yeah. Michael Harney's joining us here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. From Orange is the New Black, he plays Sam Healy on the show, and he's one of the most, just felt like he was like, just here. I felt, like, I felt like he was just here. It was like was amazing. He's, he's back already. I mean, you know, wow. you can't stay away from us, I guess. Exactly. Like, ah, we love him. We love the fact that he's here. So let's just jump into this episode because uh, this episode was, I think, to me personally, it showed a lot of the screwdriver situation actually shown a lot of the inner workings of how the prison system works right. kind of thing. From where it started to where it ended up. <laughs> this is really <laughs> funny. But, <laughs> 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 you know, you think it's going to be used for one thing, and they had you totally thinking mm -hmm. that something is going to happen with right. the screwdriver <laughs> that nobody, I don't think, was, it was total misdirection. <laughs> it was like how it ended up. You're like, oh, wow, I wasn't thinking. I was thinking mm -hmm. about somebody who's going to get stabbed. Like, right. they're ringing right. up. And, yeah, something else was going on with that screwdriver. But... <laughs> But my three questions, really quickly, my three questions, Emma, and then I'll let you say, three questions for this episode is, should Piper have just come clean about the screwdriver, number one? Secondly, does Miss Claudette deserve to be locked up? And three, are Nikki and Alex going to hook up? Those are my three questions. So, starting with this screwdriver situation, the girl who should have been a TA for the educational program ends up in the, <laughs> the woodshop room. <laughs> Right. Doing... Fixing a lamp. Yes, fixing electrical... Fixing electrical... Which I think blah, blah, hilarious. blah. With Officer Luzchek, mm -hmm. who seems to be like this... He's just I don't know. there to get a he's, check. He's just there to get a check. Yeah. Exactly. He's there to get a check. That's it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I didn't make that... Boom. That's why his name is Gingy. Yeah, Gingy. <laughs> Gingy, oh, you're slick. Okay, loose check. Yeah, he's just there to catch a check. He is. Because this guy does not care a bit about his job, I don't think, I think he's just like, yeah, right. sure, whatever. Just yeah. like when he made he's that comment, out. he's like, yeah, I see a lot of things, mm -hmm. and and whatever. And he slams the book down in front of Piper and tells her to read it, and I don't know, is this like a, is this like work thing where they work all day? I don't know. Is, is that, is that what it's all. supposed to be? They work uh, fairly through the day, I think, yeah. much through the day. But what for, are they but for eleven they, cents an hour? That's what I'm saying. But what are they? Are they actually fixing things for the prison? Well, in the episode, you know, Piper's working on the lamp, and <laughs> I think other other people they they work on things that need to be done. They okay. use the inmates. Mm -hmm. It's like that uh, line uh, when uh, Piper gets picked up to get driven down to the prison. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, she says, "You're driving. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're an inmate. Yeah, well, who else is going to do it?" <laughs> Right. Uh, mm -hmm. it's Good like point. That, so. Yeah, because I just yeah. had to. I was like, okay, are they really fixing stuff? Because if so, it's not going so well. Mm -hmm. Nothing in this. I see why everything but is they broken. Have, they have that, you know, in regular jails and facilities as well. You work for 
very small amount, 11 cents. <laughs> right. But someone needs to do the work, so. Does that go to commissary? Where does that 11 cents go? Do they have to get workers' comp for them? <laughs> Such an HR question. Right. Such an HR question. You're so funny. Well, liability that. insurance. Right. I know because she like you know shocked herself in the right. lamp there. You know like yeah. what. Yeah. But yes. I don't yeah. Know. I guess it goes to the comp. I don't know because she mentioned the the other. I can't think of the other inmate's name. It said oh it's like five seventy five for a. Pepsi. So that's what I was thinking. Does it go towards their commissary yeah. allowance? Their books, the, right? Yeah. yeah. It goes on yeah. the books. Is the books only for commissary stuff? The books, meaning? When people say, like, yeah, I put it on the books yeah. in the prison system. Yeah, it's uh, for their money. Okay. So in case they don't have anyone, you know, yeah. right. they can earn putting it, the money old... in their account like Larry. Yeah. Right. So we're sending them presents. Right. So eight, an eight-hour day is basically 88 cents. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. I don't see how you can get away with that, and, and that's illegal, I even think if it, you're locked up. I, I think indentured like service made more than they, that, like 600 right. years ago. Minimum wage. <laughs> I don't that's think horrible. minimum wage works when you're in the prison. Why now. not? You're still working. You're just. <laughs> what about? You're what about, working in the prison system. I don't know. What do you think about that, Michael? Do you think that people <laughs> behind bars should definitely get minimum wage at least, or is is 88 cents fair, and why? <laughs> <laughs> It's 80 cents yeah. fair, and why? Expose <laughs> the my hard-hitting hard questions, hard questions here. I don't think I've really, I, I haven't really broached that in myself, but I think that uh, them getting a good, a better wage than 11 cents an hour for sure. You know, but I, wa I want to mention something else. Uh, there, there, a lot of people don't have anybody yeah. mm -hmm. that's coming to see them. Mm -hmm. They don't have anybody that's communicating with them. They're really forgotten. And I think that uh, that's uh, a very sad commentary on how we deal with people that are incarcerated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, Piper's waiting for this money to come in. Other inmates are waiting for their, their money to come in. But there are a lot of people that aren't waiting for anything because nobody's sending it. Right. Yeah, I wow. think you, you bring up a good point because in this episode with Miss Claudette, you know, the, mm -hmm. the Bennett comes by and says, oh, you weren't here for mail call today. And she's like, I never get anything. So I never show up. Right. So it was very interesting because as we learned a little bit more of her backstory in this this episode and it's very kind of it's sad. We are going to talk sad when you think about that. Yeah, it like, is there's sad. nobody there that. But part of me feels of like not, not to cut you off, but not, part of me feels like Miss Claudette has kind of cut herself cut herself off from outside the outside world I mean part of me feels like that just you know looking at her character mm -hmm. um, in order to cope mm -hmm. right right. Yeah. right like uh, she you know we see her backstory and she she started off she came from did they say where, where she came from? I'm assuming it's Haiti, just because the names are are and they were French. They're French names. And they were speaking. Yeah, were they speaking French. Creole or French at yes. one point? Yeah. I think something too. You know, um, uh, what she did, she was made uh, aware of a very heinous crime that was committed against that young girl. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And then she went, and she took care of business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she was incarcerated. Mm -hmm. right. right. So here she is. Uh, now I'm not condoning murder. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. But she's basically doing something. What would you say, righteous? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she's doing time for it. Right. And uh, on a, on the palette, you know, like when we're when we're or on the canvas, when we're looking at this, we go, hey, you know, wow. You know, I wonder how many how many other people are, are inside that have done things that right. are really yeah. righteous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Y you know, so that's another whole thing mm -hmm. I, I haven't heard a lot of people talk about, but I think it's a really interesting. Aspect. I think that's a good point. you know that's a great point you bring, mm -hmm. you bring up, but it also um, it hit it was emotional for her as well because she started off, you know, mm -hmm. as one of the girls. As one of the girls, right? Mm -hmm. So to her, it's very close to her heart having I don't know maybe she's you know been abused and she's mm -hmm. gone through that path too so she feels like she needs to protect them because no one protected her mm -hmm. the previous um, what do you call 
the her headmistress, role, headmistress yeah. you know, um, wasn't mm -hmm. wasn't so nice when she first got mm -hmm. there. She's like, okay, hurry up, change and get back, get to work. And the gentleman that brought her was like, okay, hold on, let's eat something first. Right. So she's never had anyone, which is another point why no Baptiste. one visits her mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. she doesn't really have anyone. Right. Yeah, and that's sort of what I had gotten when kind of jumping ahead with the episode of why she may not have wanted to, you know, be up for early parole because I felt like she had no idea. Of, she, has, she had nobody out there, and she, you know, she, I almost felt like she had more of a community in prison, and that's what I took at first when she first didn't want to take early release. And the one uh, person she had got married, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That's how I took it when I was aspects when I that I, I find in this, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that it becomes... Uh, people become more aware of it is that um, people that wind up becoming incarcerated usually are victims themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They have been victimized and uh, in many cases on profound levels. So their victimization of others uh, is not necessarily something that they are trying to do. Right. Yeah. It's almost because of their their uh, natures have been skewed. Their yeah, natures have been yeah. completely yeah, yeah, environment, people, uh, abuse, profound abuse. Yeah. And so they become unless they do the work. And some people don't have the resource, the financial mm -hmm. resources, the personal resources, mm -hmm. the support people to do that work. Yeah. So then they become perpetrators mm -hmm. after they are victims. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's just kind of common knowledge in this world so um, I think it what it is what it does is it forms the seeds of compassion to say well okay wait a minute let me look at this a little bit differently you know so then then all of a sudden we're not looking at us and them mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we're looking at uh, what why why is this why has this happened to this individual right. why has this person done this I think you have a good a good point about that you know at first, you kind of like, you can't, it's it's illegal to kill people, obviously, but when you see, you know, why Claudette did what she did, you feel for her, you mm -hmm. feel bad for her because she had good intentions even though she killed someone. Um, I also think in this situation, it, it brings up a good question, what do you do with immigration? Because I'm not sure, you know, you mentioned that when you talked to her, mm -hmm. Healy mentions that to Claudette as far as, um, immigration some laws have changed is is Claudette not a US citizen and if so do aren't US citizens supposed to get deported if they commit a crime or do they stay in the country instead of face deportation for a crime they've committed in this country do you have any insight into that I don't really know okay. uh, again when I create stuff when I'm it doesn't have to do with logistics <laughs> <laughs> it has to do with something else okay I think and she's if, it, if it is logistical, it ha I have to make it something that resonates true for me. Yes. Okay. Because it was just that mentioned in this episode, and Healy does say, like, some of the, mm -hmm. you know, immigration laws have changed, so that made me go, well, is she an immigrant? She's not legal? Well, she After might be a resident. Thing, you know, I, I was going to be able to help her. Okay. Yeah. By in, in telling her some information mm -hmm. about the change in some laws that okay. she would be able to utilize in order to gain her freedom. Mm -hmm. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Makes sense. But I think it's really important to um, acknowledge how people's past really plays um, a vital role in, you know, their characters and the inmates. And at first I was um, thinking like everyone else how she was so crazy, you know, how she wanted everything so clean and neat and, you know, you couldn't put anything. And when we see, and I keep on forgetting what her name is, Track Girl. Oh, the girl who runs Track. Oh, yeah. You know, when she first um, gets yeah. there, she's like, I, this is the U.S. I could eat chicken, you know, a mm -hmm. cup of noodles even if I want oh, yes. to. And um, and then when we see uh, Claudette and her past, and I was like, oh, because she cleans. You know, that's like people's past, and that's all right. she knew. That's mm -hmm. all she was. She mastered that. Yeah. And now, you know, everyone brings their craft into, uh, into the facility, like Piper and her fixing the medicine for... Uh, for Red and Red bringing her, you know, cooking, uh, cooking yeah. experience. And it's just really neat to see everyone bring their craft and what they're good at and they're actually using it. Right. 
And as they're cleaning, you know, I mean, at the very beginning of this episode, it opens up with Piper cleaning the pee off the floor, Mm -hmm. which then is when I found there was no poo on the floor. (laughs) (laughs) Come back to that. But yeah, but and then you know, and and it's funny because Piper says, you know, I've never had to clean anybody's pee before. I don't know what I'm doing. There's, of course, there's no sanitary, you know, no disinfectant. I don't Mm -hmm. know. I'm just trying to get this pee off of me. And then we see (laughs) why Claudette. I mean, yeah, why Claudette? Yeah, Mm -hmm. Claudette is like you. Clearly, this doesn't face her as much as, you know, she's freaking out for a different reason yeah. than Piper is because she's cleaned people's pee before, I'm sure, and much worse in right. her line of work. So just, well, yeah. And I took it, too, as a different, uh, almost on a deeper layer of, like, this was gave her a little bit of psychological comfort being able to have that space the way she wanted it. And, and you know, it, was, it gave her that kind of sense that she, I felt like she was lacking the rest of her world in her life. Yeah. And that's what it was for her, was having that sense of well, control also, and clean as a psychological right. thing right. for her comfort, you know, as a... And she's used to dictating. Yes. Like, well, that too, exactly. She's, she's used, used to being in control. And you gotta remember a lot yeah. of the women that are in the facility with her are younger than her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she's used to telling young girls, yeah. blah, 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 A, B, C, D, and E, and this is how it's gonna be, and this is how you have to be, and then they're like, okay, okay, okay. Right. You know, so... She's yeah, the, the, her control and, right. and, and, and all that in order. Right. And, and it's a good thing. I mean, you need to have some sort of order. And she even has order with her own cubicle. Yeah. 18. And, and I think she can respect the fact the way that um, Piper kind of goes off on her about, you know, can you cut me some slack today? I've got to right. have had a lot of stuff mm-hmm. going on. And, if, and you see Piper walk away and you see Claudette smile a little bit. But obviously when her first roommate, which I can't remember her name either, either, track girl who, who came <laughs> in, you know, who was her, I guess her her prison sorority sister. I guess you come in on the same line as your prison right. sister. I don't know. But the girl that comes <laughs> in with Piper, one of the, the three girls, um, She's, she comes off really rude to Claudette, so I can see why Claudette doesn't like her. Mm-hmm. But even though Piper's going off as well, she's going off in a respectful manner, and, and I think Claudette can accept that. And she's like, you know what? You're cool with me. I get it. I think that fear plays a big part in uh, inmates coming in to prison, and uh, it's a very awesome reality to face. You know, I remember when I did uh, work up in Austin, uh, prison, Austin State Prison, when I was a young guy, and I heard that door come, uh, you know, closing behind me when I went for visiting time, Mm -hmm. and that, man, that was a big door, (laughs) and uh, it just kind of came home to me, and then I went to visit this guy that we were working with, and I remember he introduced me to a friend of his, whose name was Tiny, (laughs) and this guy was about 6'8", he must have been 350. Goodness. Wow. And there wasn't an ounce of fat on him. I mean, he, wow. was just, he was just huge. He was oh, wow. just huge. And he shook my hand, you know, really gentle. You know, like, and, um, but uh, that's just a symbolic uh, thing of, of the awesomeness of it. But the fear of losing control of your life mm-hmm. and the fear of not being able to make decisions for for yourself any longer, do the things that you want to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that that brings up uh, people wanting to control their environment. Mm -hmm. And the way that they control their environment, I think, is really uh, telling of the particular character. Mm -hmm. And certainly Claudette, uh, her environment is so clean environment is so orderly everything that she's doing it's it's her way of detaching from and handling uh the loss of her her rights Mm -hmm. right um so and i think um piper is you know in a way um new light for a lot of the inmates because she brings hope and um even though people don't really see it right away, but ambition because she's still, you know, talking about, um, you know, her business and she's, she just brings a different energy around the inmates because everyone's been there for so long that they've kind of um, gone with the system and lost hope and, you know, how she tells uh, Nikki, you know, sometimes I wake up crying and wanting to kill myself and when does that, um, when when do you stop feeling like that? And Nikki says, you know, I'll let you know when 
it happens. So, yeah. but I think she's doing a great job coping with it and um, just being an aspiration for the other inmates. Right. And I think she's atypical, you know, she's not, uh, she's done work on herself. She's uh, probably had some therapy. She's, uh, she's very well read. Mm -hmm. uh, she's very smart. She's able to apply things uh, in the o outside of prison. She's very smart. She's been able to navigate and, and live her life in a, in a fulfilling way. So I think that uh, it's very interesting to watch. One of the things that I like watching about Taylor's performance is, is uh, again, I use the word compassion, but she's really uh, trying to be present with everyone in a way that is uh, oftentimes very supportive of them, even if she's having difficulty with them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if they're causing her problems, uh, she'll still try to come back with the most life-affirming thing that she can do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think there's a, uh, a real positive aspect uh, to Piper in terms of what she's able to execute uh, inside and, and I think that that's uh, kind of a lesson in itself as, as, as we watch her um, and she's not perfect mm -hmm. you know which is really wonderful when you have a good writing team and they, they, they really allow you to see uh, the way it is not the way that we would, would want something to be from a, from a child perspective my question is, did she realize that she had the screwdriver, like, the same day? Or was yeah. it, like, the yeah. next? She, she, when she yeah. goes back outside and to gets her get sweatshirt or the sweatshirt that right. fell from lunch. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's why I'm thinking, based on her being as green as she is, you know, as far as the inner workings of prison or whatever, and then Caputo comes in there and puts the fear of God in them as far as having to spend an extra five years, whoever gets mm -hmm. caught with this thing or whatever, blah, 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 and then porn stash comes and fills her up, and, you know, they do this whole, like, uh, they frisk everybody, and they send a uh, track girl to shoe, you know, and it, it, I still feel like she should have come clean with a screwdriver, like, right then. I, I still, I still feel like I still. That's just me. I just feel like if she would have come clean right then, it would have been believable coming from her that she didn't. She was like, "Oh, I, I put it in my, in my. It was in my." Because at the end of the day, it still wasn't gone for a period of time, where the workday was over, and it, for it to go and have done any harm and then come back. It was still like she was scared. around. She was scared, though. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not mad at her for being scared. No, 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 but I mean that. Yeah, I mean it's logical that yeah. she'd be scared. You can't. Of uh, the fear factor becomes irrational mm -hmm. uh, inside, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, you're dealing with you don't have any rights, mm -hmm. really, when you get down to it. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I think that that's really what it was about for me. It was that sense of fear uh, for her. Mm. Um, yeah, which which propelled her not to, not to do it. But I'm, you know, we'll, 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 I'm just analyzing. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's that's but how yeah, I took it too. Is that she was she was scared, and then she was worried when he said the five years thing. That right. she's thinking, oh my god, I just want to get out of here. Like just Aside thinking about it. from the five years having Mendez like fill her, mm -hmm. right. it was just nasty. Like yeah. I think she was probably like imagining, okay, yeah. what's gonna happen to me if I come clean? Mm -hmm. You know, they're gonna probably hold this over my head and make me do stuff. It's so I don't get the five yeah. years, and you know, it's just yeah. And I think when that happens disgusting. to you as a woman, you're just kind of like. I just let me just get out of here really quick. And, and I think she was going the shoe, like, right, and she's mm -hmm. just like, "Oh my gosh, this is crazy." So now she's dealing with I put somebody in shoe by accident. Oh my gosh, I'll probably go to shoe mm -hmm. as well. This man just felt upon mm -hmm. me, and no one said anything. Uh, you know, there's just a lot going on in her head. So I think that is part of what Michael was speaking about, which is the irrational aspect of fear. Now she's just like, I I've lost it. But I, but what I was gonna say is I, I like how I at first I was scared about Piper being Claudette's roommate, but mm -hmm. with this whole screwdriver situation, I like the fact that Claudette is her roommate, and I think they're gonna make a really nice team. I hope they do. <laughs> well, She's like, you didn't take that out. 
<laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, Claudette actually made a good. She made a good point too. She said that line though, which added to this whole thing that we were talking about is, you know, how the they don't believe the truth kind of thing. So I think mm -hmm. you know, right. she was really worried because she, she did have that moment like I should just kind of tell them. And and Claudette has right. that good point because it's true because it's almost like if you were to say, oh, whoops, I accidentally dropped it out there, and you don't, and that was the truth, where the chances are they would actually believe it, and you know. So I think that was another. Thing running through her mind as well. Well, yeah. if, you, if you guys think that it's a good idea, or or you think that it's a, a good thing that that uh, Piper is rooming with Miss Claudette, if that's a, a good setup for for Piper continuing on in her stay in the ghetto, <laughs> so to speak, <laughs> I know. or or you think Piper, do you think Piper should have given the screwdriver up, or she should have kept it? Was it was it a gamble? You guys can give us a call, put in your two cents, ask us, tell us what you think, ask Michael, get, see, see if you can get some insight from him, 424-256-1729, 424-256-1729. I think it's good that she's staying with Miss Claudette also. I think they make a good pair. I right. think it sucks that they're in, they're both in the situation uh, that they're in, and I think they're both relatable. One of the most valuable things, you know, uh, for her to be placed with Claudette is that Claudette has figured out how to do time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As we discussed mm -hmm. in the last episode. And I think that that's really sort of a favor to Piper to to go with her to learn. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, how, how are you going to do time? So it's, a, it's sort of like a, a, a good thing for her to be around her. Uh, to learn, uh, and I think a lot of it has to do with detachment. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of it has to do with being able to detach from all the stuff in your head and just get down to doing your time. So we you know what are, what are the positive things I can be doing today? What, what can I do to to make this time go? Right. So, question on that: Was that strategically placed by Healy? To be yeah, I felt that, uh, roommates with Claudette? That's what I uh, kind of felt it. Yeah, that's I was reading through things. I felt, yeah, well, I made that happen. Okay. I felt like if she would have slipped, she could have taken Healy to the side and given him the screwdriver, and he would have been like, okay, I'll take care of it. Don't worry. Like, And she, you know. He would have believed her. Mm -hmm. Like I just, I, don't know, I randomly put it in my pocket at lunch. I, yeah. I wasn't. They I didn't think give he, thirty minutes, full thirty minutes. What is wrong with you guys? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying though. I don't know if he's and then crazy a good guy yet. Yeah. Hmm. Still uh -huh. saying he, he might not be a good guy. I thought that's what she was going to do though. That one point when she, yeah. I know, I know that you know the guards were frisking everybody. And she had it with her, but I thought at first when she had was you know pulled him to the side that she was going to say she had it, and I think maybe she was considering doing that, and then she realized, okay, maybe. I can't quite never, trust him yeah, yet. I can't do it. You never well, know. it was she was getting interrupted. I mean, Crazy Eyes is like calling her dandelion <laughs> and all this, and if she didn't have that intimacy, intimate space that she wanted to have to have his undivided attention, right. I think to be able to like divulge that, like, look, I have the screwdriver. Could right. you blah 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 blah? It was there's, a mistake. There's a separation though. You know, there's a separation between the inmates and uh, the COs. And, mm -hmm. uh, there's a respect. Uh, that's uh, fostered between the inmates, that they are a group unto themselves, that they will not rely on the COs to do for them. Mm -hmm. It's almost like they, uh, they, they, they will rely on the COs to do things for them through manipulation and whenever they can get favors or something like that, but there's, a, there's also a sense of honor mm -hmm. uh, that exists. I hope I'm saying this right, but um, for Piper, I believe. And it's a sense of saying, well, I'm going to figure this out uh, on my own. And it's also in a, in a later episode, it comes out again. So there's that aspect of it. And then um, there's, again, this, this fear factor. I don't know this guy, you know. You're right. I, 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 he, he may turn on me in, in mm -hmm. a second, mm -hmm. and then, then where am I going to mm -hmm. be? Right. You know, so there's... It's a, it's a multi-layered uh, scenario, yep. uh, and 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 one that has to be especially when you're new, you have to tread lightly because you want to be accepted by the inmate population, right? So that you can do your time. And she definitely is working on Piper is definitely working on getting accepted, especially now that she's the <laughs> resident <laughs> lawyer. Somehow being you know with the the inmates. 
asking her to look at their appeal letters, which I think would be very interesting for her. I think it's, you know, I think it's good that she's able, they, they're able to look at her for the hope, like you said, Emma. Mm -hmm. But it's also a way for her to kind of establish herself and say, well, I guess I'll help you the best way I can. Right. You know? and, and like you were saying, how she's incredibly smart and mm -hmm. that these, you know, fellow prisoners see her as being someone that could be potentially very smart and maybe help them out, you know, when it comes to certain things like writing a good letter and... You know, yeah. I knew a jailhouse lawyer. They called jailhouse lawyers <laughs> uh, years ago, and he had a lot of respect, you know, uh, among oh, yeah. the inmates uh, because they would come to him. Mm -hmm. As in the show, they'd come to him with letters mm -hmm. uh, and say, "Would you please help me? Uh, you know, in this parole situation. Would you please help me? I, I just found this in the library. Uh, would you help me? Or is there any way that I can possibly?" Uh, have this changed, have my, have the charges changed against me or right. something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this guy would read voluminous amounts of things and uh, he was really, he, had, he was a self-taught uh, lawyer. It's amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and he did that. He had a lot of time. He had done 20 years at that time. <laughs> wow. So uh, he... Uh, a lot of time to read. Mm -hmm. He really had a lot of, uh, he helped a lot of people uh, with their cases, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and so I think that she's going to have, you're right, she'll, she'll have, uh, she'll be, receive a lot of respect uh, from that. Yeah. This will be her skill, perhaps. Be her skill. Like Red with the kitchen, maybe this will be her maybe. thing, maybe. I don't know. But this this <laughs> this episode was good about relationships, too. I think you, we got an inside scoop to see what it's really like it's with Mercy mm -hmm. and, you know, who used to be Boo's Boo. Mm -hmm. She's now, <laughs> what's her name? With the, I can't remember. Trisha. 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 Yes, I know. She's I Trisha's name Boo. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you, you see on the inside, you form these relationships mm -hmm. and you think they're supposed to last. Right. And then when your partner leaves, where does that leave you? She's yeah. not going to wait for her. <laughs> I don't even not. have to make that a hot <laughs> no, question. Right? Mercy yeah. is not going to wait for, no. uh, for Trisha to get out. No, we all She's going to move on. And I love how Claudette, you know, stops her from, right. um, you know, framing, putting the, yeah. framing her for uh -huh. the further drugs. Right. And yeah. it does show that she cares. Right. Because, you know, even though she doesn't have anyone in the outside to who's waiting for her, mm -hmm. for her to, uh, you know, uh, appeal and get out, she does want other people to continue on with their lives. Right. Mm -hmm. And she stops Trish and says, you know... You can't mess with someone else's life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she needs to go. She needs to, um, you know, explore and get out. And what you're doing is wrong. Right. And I love how the show is a lot like real life, even though it's you know about inmates. It, it's, in a way, a mirror image of how life is. And um, even though it's there's a lot of stereotypes that goes on. You know, you have everyone clustered into, um, you know, groups. You have the. Uh, the Hispanics, the Latins, you have the whites, you have the, you know, the blacks, African Americans, and in reality, life is like that too. We just don't realize it. And a lot of the crimes that go on and about, what was it, the uh, child support, you know people that do it on a daily basis. And, you know, some might be relatives, some might be neighbors, and to see these people doing time for something, you know, that's not as big ass killing someone it really makes you think like wow yeah yeah and i think it, you, you bring up a good point there are like those clicks and there's the hierarchy just like you have in the outside world that kind of happens now in this in this controlled environment but piper is the one that connects everyone together yeah because mm -hmm. you don't have a white you know uh inmate going into what did you call that Chew. The ghetto. The ghetto. They called it was the ghetto. The ghetto. <laughs> yeah, they call it. Yeah. You know, it's a big deal. As Nikki says, you know, you have to come sit with your kind, and she's like, "What do you mean?" She's so. Yeah. That's why I call her naive. You know, not in the sense that she doesn't know anything, just about she's naive in the, the the jail life and how things are because she's not used to that. Like in you're the saying, outside. the street, the street smarts. She's, she exactly. Street to her, smarts. everyone is equal. To her, you know, what do you mean we're segregated and? you know the whites don't sit with the blacks and she's breaking all of that right. she's breaking all those laws she's you know sitting with the blacks she's in line she's with down them to swirl her girlfriend crazy eyes is black they've got a little chocolate oh that was so funny but even with the um getting back to the screwdriver portion i didn't think 
the screwdriver was going to end up where it did. <laughs> like, oh None God. of us did. I really thought, you know, since we're talking about relationships, I thought It was logical after I, I, mean, I, yeah, right? I saw it. I was like, oh, that makes going to kill. She's going to kill Trish. She's going to take this. And what did he? What did uh, Caputo say right through the... The rib cage. The rib cage. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you puncture a lung, which is new. I didn't know that. It's right. new for me. Now I know how to puncture a lung. <laughs> but I really thought for, for a minute that she was going to kill Trisha. And so, of course, when the right. episode ends and we see that's where the... the Screwdriver it ended up. Goes. But yeah. because that's that, that's because you know Red um, when she brought the corn and she was telling Boo like there there are other you know inmates right. right you don't and psychologically you get so stuck on one mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Um, where was I they were talking about doing a test where um, it's somewhere where it's just a uh, it's psychological what you fall in love with mm-hmm. so sh- to her it was like. Um, is it Mercy? Mercy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mercy is like the one. Right. And there's no one else. But as soon as someone else comes around, she's going to forget about Mercy mm-hmm. and she's going to move on. So right. that's why I think what Rudd said was uh, important. Like, there's plenty of fish in the sea. Don't <laughs> worry about it. <laughs> yes. And before we go, I have a question, though. Mm-hmm. Um, so did Porn Stash, he saw the screwdriver at in Claudette's little makeshift heater thing, right, for the egg? No. He didn't see Because he no. looked in see, it. See, that's what I was thinking, out. too. I was like, did he not see it? And it was just because you're all, like, he just freaking out thinking he's going to see it. But he, like, Are you sniffed sure? it. And yeah, he didn't it did show him sniffing and smelling. But see, I yeah. thought it was because... She, Claudette has that kind of a power or, or something. She's been there long enough. They don't mess with Claudette. Is that the case? I don't think he saw oh, it. He just I didn't, didn't think he it. saw it either, okay. but I was freaking out, too. And, and honestly, and, and, and that's the thing I want to touch on before we wind down, is that it is, it's interesting to see how much the missing screwdriver affected the guards negatively because mm-hmm. obviously loose check is in big trouble because he didn't supervise the situation properly. And secondly, there's, you know, just like Caputo said, uh, loose check uh, is responsible for losing it, but you guys are responsible for finding mm-hmm. it. Yeah. So obviously, you know, uh, Bennett and Pornstash and the other guys, are, they're responsible for finding this mm-hmm. thing, which is potentially a deadly weapon. Right. And they could be in trouble for not locating this thing. Right. <laughs> locating the screwdriver. But I think that Mendez is just pissed because they have this kind of pressure that's going on now. So he's like, I'm just going to screw with everybody and throw their stuff around and and toss it around and I don't care like right. whatever if some of these people die I don't care like I don't think he cares yeah. I don't think that's a concern of his but don't you think it's fear uh, from the um, the officers that the weapon will be used against them because in now general, the inmates yeah. have something that they have no control over which is yeah which is so being part of it's it yeah the power, the power. shifting mm-hmm. from the you know from authorities to the inmates now it's like well i could be walking around the corner and someone stabs me well, i think you know the the inmates in many respects do run the prison mm-hmm. yeah in in many very real respects they do run the prison but violence has to be kept that's where the the rubber hits the road that's where you have to come in and make authoritative decisions to control that aspect of things. Otherwise, uh, you, you'll wind up with riots and, and everything else. And I think the, so the, the uh, administrational aspect of uh, the prison, the people that are working there, they have to keep a lid on that to make sure that that's not going to happen. All right. Okay. Uh, and that's why they all freak out. Yeah. Uh, because uh, you're right. It could, it could be an inmate. It could be... A CO, it could be anybody. Right. Uh, and so they're trying to. It, it, so many aspects of life uh, in Litchfield is about control. It's really, you know, when you look at it, it's about control in so many respects. Control and wanting to be accepted. I think yes. those are oh, yeah. two mm-hmm. key, even, you know, from the authorities and from the officers, people that work there um, I have a backstory too that we just don't know yet. But uh, well, you'll find out. You yes, know, we, we have find out. Mendez, who is, I think, even though he's creepy, um, it's it's a, a way for him to feel accepted. And mm-hmm. like everyone else, uh, Caputo and the mm-hmm. inmates, we we see people acting tough, and then right as soon as you're nice to them, which Piper is, which puts everyone at shock because they let their their guard down. Now they're different. Like you see that with Tasty, she's so tough and. 
wanting to fight people and then With she's, her two gold locks mm -hmm. of hair and she's you know <laughs> filling up piper in the first episode and saying you know you have tv tv titties okay now get out of my way right <laughs> i need to take a shower so i think that's really important um uh, the uh the uh the backstory and, and I think that that's really being utilized in a very life-affirming mm -hmm. way uh, by the writing team. Because, uh, again, we see why people are doing what they're doing. Right. Mm -hmm. So what it does is it's a, it really gives the viewer an opportunity to say, oh, well, I can understand that. Mm -hmm. Which leads them into uh, saying, well, yeah, I did this particular thing I'm not proud of because of... I can see that it tracks back to when that other thing happened to me. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so really, we're just all if 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 if, pe if we can uh, generate compassion fr from the viewing audience um, for folks that are incarcerated, I think that would be a really great thing, a really positive thing that came out of the show. Because too often times it's just, you know, we just mm -hmm. wash our hands of it. Yeah. Right. Nobody wants to know about it. It's sloppy. It's it's messy. It's dirty. It's uh, we don't want to we don't want to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think that it's important for us all to to deal with each other's stuff, or to be at the very least to 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 sit and listen, to be supportive of. Uh, our brothers and sisters, you know, uh, as, as they go through their lives and, and the problems that they embrace in their lives. I and think that's important. I think the show, hopefully, that, that'll be part of the big Yeah, it brings, up, it brings up a good point because there's just so much of that going on in the news, you know, especially like out here with the whole stuff with reducing the prison population in California and you just read about it and you think, oh, it, it, it comes down to them just being a number. Oh, you have to get down to 100,000 people or whatever. And then it's like, oh, now it's just to a number. And then, you know, they had this whole issue with the... Uh, phone calls to family members and how they have these companies going to monopolize the prison system and it costs family members you know 60 bucks to have a 15 minute conversation with their family members they don't get to talk to except once a week so it's like yeah. reading these stories now and now watching the show has given me a little bit more of an insight than now a lot of times they're just like oh they're just a number and it doesn't affect me but being able to watch this show has definitely kind of opened my eyes that there is more to it these are people and these are people they right? had right. And reasons that got, that got them there and especially with all this going on in the news today yeah you know piper says it later on in the in the episode it's not spoiler for you guys but you know you can't spoil no, it for us. i'm not spoiling it but you know she does bring up a good point that you know i'm because people think you know she's piper you know on the outside and she says i'm just like everyone else in right. here i'm no different right yeah and that's what we need to understand that perception has a lot to do with mm -hmm. reality mm -hmm. yeah. and what you perceive you know inmates are bad you go to jail you're a bad person mm -hmm. you don't talk to them you don't associate yourself with them but she's saying i'm no different than them mm -hmm. so and that's true and mm -hmm. that's really true you know that's there's a lot in that there's a lot in that and, yeah uh, hopefully that'll be part of what people take away from this you know Mm -hmm. Well, we want to see what happens next week. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. part, Season of, two. part of our reality <laughs> is that we got to go to news and gossip <laughs> really quickly. After Buzz TV News. So there's been a couple of confirmations of people who will be in season two. One being Taryn Manning, who plays Tiffany Pensatucky Doggett. Pensatucky. Number two. Wow. T Tasha Tasty Jefferson, played by Danielle Brooks, will also be in season two. And Tasty Crazy Hattie. Eyes, mm -hmm. played by Uzo Aduba, will also be in season two. And there's a new inmate. Her name is... Well, her real actress name is Lorraine Toussaint, who she's a, an amazing actress, and she plays V, who is a longtime street tough who ran her own drug business. So, Ooh. season two is, mm. and mm. also Michael Harney, because it's season two. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be really good. Michael Harney, as long as Michael uh, Harney's, I'm watching. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta see what Healy's antics do to happen right. next season. Antics, that. that's right. Antics. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go to predictions. <laughs> First. And now, <laughs> your After Buzz TV predictions. Okay, episode five, uh, season one predictions of Orange is the New Black. Scott Moore, <laughs> go. Well, I don't know if it's going to happen in episode five, but I do think there's going to be some repercussions for the missing screwdriver because you saw Loose Check buy the, have a replacement screwdriver they brought in, and so I feel like there's going to be some something's going to happen because there's no way that we're going to get away with 
the screw. So something's gonna happen with that. If it happens episode five or down the road in this season, yeah, there's gonna be some repercussions for that screwdriver. Okay. The screwdriver was like brand new, it's all <laughs> yeah. shiny. So that's what I'm saying. There's gonna be something that's gonna come from that. Okay, my prediction is for Diaz and Bennett. I think they're gonna kiss. <laughs> Episode five, the the Each tension other? is just yeah, the tension just healed. <laughs> <laughs> Diaz and Bennett, yeah, they keep this episode. He gave her the little snuff. Yeah. They, you know, the last Cleaned episode. it out of the teeth. Right, yeah. So they're, they're With their kiss, earring. Kiss, 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 kiss. I feel like it's coming really soon. So that's it. Hmm. Well, we don't want to spoil it for you guys. Don't do you spoil it. Don't spoil it. Me, me and, my, and, and Michael won't say anything. <laughs> who, haven't, who haven't watched the whole season yet for you guys. Okay. <laughs> Until next time, where can we find you guys? You can always find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Meg Scoop, like Scoop of Ice Cream. And don't forget to go to CerealBuddies.com and download Adventures of Cereal Buddies. It helps support us right here at AfterBuzz TV. That's right. It's $4.99 to rent and only $5.99 to own. You can find me on Twitter at SMAN80. That's S-M-A-N-8-0. And here for two more episodes of True Blood on Sunday nights. You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Real Emma K. And a big shout out to our special guest, Michael Harney, from the cast of Orange is the New Black. Thanks for yes. coming by again. Pleasure, You're the man. Really we good. appreciate Thank you. Thank you. Really good hang with and you. hopefully <laughs> you'll be back again either before the season's out or definitely for season two. Cool, yes. man. Well, most definitely. You and Riley. Where's Riley? Sleeping. I'm your host, Thaddeus Massey, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Club Thaddeus, how it sounds, and you can just Google it and figure out how to spell it. Oh, where can we find Michael Harney? Where can we find you on Oh, yeah, where can we find you, Michael? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Michael Harney 4. Michael Harney 4 on Twitter. You can find Michael there and follow him to get little tidbits mm-hmm. about the show. Follow, follow. follow, follow. Yes. Mm-hmm. Until next time, after buzzers. Peace. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. See you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.